Hey guys, it's your boy, Mike, the businessman. All right, today I wanna to discuss risk mitigation, okay? And also let's talk about some emerging risk I see in the industry, okay? So for me, you guys know my background, right? I started off in tech and cyber operational risk management for some big banks in the country you guys might've heard of, like JP Morgan Chase, Bank of America, USAA. And really, it's just a fancy phrase for saying, I'm the one that keeps out the bad guys from the system, okay? Keeps out your hackers, all the insider threats, all of that. Um, and so in corporate America, we have something we call controls, okay? And controls are things you put in place to either minimize, transfer, or avoid risk. Okay, so perfect example is a door leading into your house. That's a control, it's to keep thieves out of your house. Okay, a uh, padlock on a, 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 your luggage. That's a control to keep people from stealing stuff inside your luggage. Okay, so in, in, in any business you have, it's important that you think about it from a risk perspective, okay? There's one aspect of business, it's, it's yeah, you're making money, money's coming in, but how do we also avoid us going out of business or losing a lot of money, okay? Um, you guys see it all every day on the news. There's a new company getting hacked and, and, that, and then they steal all the data of all their customers, right? That's why risk mitigation is very important because in business, especially in this business, car rentals, our biggest threat is going to be either accidents happening to us or people stealing our cars, okay? So there's a lot of fraudsters out there. Every day I turn away more customers than I accept. And so I need you guys to have a risk mitigation mindset. And I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna walk you through most of my thought process with that, right? So first things first, let's talk about the first risk, okay? Accidents, right? How do we avoid that? I think the perfect way to avoid accidents is that you prevent them before they even happen. You, you see, you, you spot the potential risk, so to speak. So every customer coming into your door, you need to qualify them. Are they high risk, medium risk, or low risk, right? And then how do we do that? We have tools we put in place, right? We either run background checks, we're running driving records on these people just to make sure so we can categorize them appropriately, know whether they're high risk, medium risk, or low risk, okay? If you're high risk, I'm not running to you. If you got stuff on your record that's too recent, I'm not giving it to you. I'm not giving you the keys to my Lambo, okay? If, if you've got a bunch of speeding tickets, why would I put you in a Lamborghini? You know, so you can go kill yourself or you go rack up a bunch of tickets and get my car impounded, okay? So I, I, I'm very mindful of that. So you guys also need to be able to spot that kind of risk. Um, so that's number one. If, if you put in those controls, so like the background check, driving records, okay? Those are controls. So that way you can spot a high risk driver. Insurance companies do it all day, every day. Trucking companies, before they hire staff, they do that too, to make sure they're not hiring the wrong people to drive these trucks and kill people on the roads. Okay, so you also need to be doing that in your company as you scale up, okay? Um, second risk, theft, okay? How do we mitigate, minimize, or transfer that risk, okay? So for theft, we have what we call GPS trackers that we put in the cars. And all these things are devices that you put in your car and literally it tells you where the car is at any point in time. Ideally, you don't wanna fall into the trap of getting the cheap ones on Amazon, right? You wanna go get a, a nice GPS that has a robust set of features in it. So say like geofencing, what does geofencing mean? That's basically, you're able to set the boundaries. For me personally, I don't want nobody leaving with my cars outside of the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So I'll set a geofence. So anytime they leave that area, I get alerted. I'm gonna kill switch that car and you're going to lose your security deposit. End of story. Even when, I, and I don't really like doing it, but even on Turo, you guys should be doing that. Let people know on your profile that this car, you can't take it out of city. You know, because I've heard too many horror stories of people renting out cars in Atlanta, and then literally the next day the car's in Houston or it's in Florida or halfway across the country. You don't want that. And the reason why that's happening to them is because they're not putting those controls in place, okay? So that's it, GPS's, there's several brands out there that I like. You can get Advantage GPS, there's Gold Star by Spirion, there's Link RLT, there's Viper, there's this TrackMate, there's so many of them out there. The most important thing you need to get on your GPS is what they call a kill switch. A kill switch is actually going to demobilize the car. So once you want to stop that renter from leaving the state, or if you have a renter that stopped paying you guys and has ghosted you, you can kill switch that car and that car will no longer start. So basically you track them, you see that they parked over at a gas station, kill switch the car. Don't go kill switching them on the middle of a highway. Once they pull over, cause they go and pull over, you kill switch the car. So that's the idea behind it, all right? So you guys definitely need to make sure you have a kill switch. If you really wanna take this seriously, you need to have multiple GPSs in your cars. If you have an expensive car and you live in a city where there's a lot of theft, then you wanna have at least two or three trackers per car. 
If you live in a city where the theft incident, that rate, theft rate is low, then you could get away with just one, okay? Another thing that's been bubbling up the past year um, is the Apple AirTags. A lot of people get lazy, they don't put the GPSs and they toss a few Apple AirTags in the car. I don't personally like it, but that's another control you guys could use, worst case scenario. I personally, I double up. I have trackers and I have Air Apple AirTags in my cars just in case they leave a certain area. And or if the thieves, so some thieves are smart. They have scanners and they'll find out that there's trackers in that car, they take them out. At least they won't find the, the, the Apple AirTag, okay? so. You can have that extra control layer in there just to make sure. So those are pretty much your two risks. Another thing that you guys need to be mindful of is insurance. Okay, so insurance is also another control you need to have in place. So when your car gets stolen or it gets in an accident, you still get paid. And if you guys are tapped in with me, I show you how to make way more money on insurance claims. Okay, so you come out looking good. Like I always say, you don't know what you don't know. So before you get into this business, it's imperative you get in the right way the first time. So when you tap in with a mentor that's done it, I show you guys how to do it and make sure you get paid doing it. All right, so with insurance, you guys, make sure your cars are insured. If you know you're gonna be driving that car personally and using it for your business, you wanna have your personal insurance. And then you also wanna have your commercial insurance for when you're using it for business use. I show you guys, I have a video out there and I tell you which company I recommend for your private insurance, your commercial insurance. Make sure you watch that video. I'll post it up here. Tap in with that video and you guys can get that product. It'll cover your car anytime you need to have a renter driving it or you're taking it out to go get a car wash or delivering a car it'll cover you guys, okay? So make sure your cars are properly insured and for private car rentals, and you cover all your risks, okay? So guys, and I also, I was discussing emerging risk. Another emerging risk I'm seeing is there's certain cars, right, that are trending right now, like the Corvette C8, the Hellcats. There's lots of reports out there of these cars getting stolen, and people will come to you with a real driver, driver's license and real insurance. They'll rent these cars and they'll ghost you, okay? You guys wanna be mindful of that, okay? So that's why you need to double up on your trackers, throw in those Apple AirTags in there, so that way when they steal those cars, you can still get them. There's horror stories of people getting their cars stolen and driven over to Mexico. Your insurance ain't gonna help you out there. You have to go find your car if you want it. That's why you need to make sure you guys have several trackers in your cars, your geofencing, you have your Apple AirTags. So hopefully you get your cars back, okay? That's a big risk out there, those very high profile, high demand cars. Um, people are out there actually unsuspecting renters are coming and stealing those cars from people. So you guys be mindful of that risk. Um, and that's it guys, really, I just wanted to kind of walk you guys through my thought process when it comes to risk mitigation and, and the controls we put in place in my establishment. If you guys are serious and not just curious and you wanna get started, you wanna do this the right way, tap in with the mentorship, it's six weeks. I teach you guys everything you need to know about the car rental business. It's only for people that are serious to execute though, okay? I have a wait list, I don't just take anybody in there. I only want people that are really serious to implement. You could do that or you can get my only car rental course. It's over 50 videos, several modules covering car sharing, ride sharing and private car rentals. It'll teach you guys everything you need to know about the car rental business, okay? So you guys can also get that. Links are gonna be in the bio, or if you guys just wanna book a one-on-one -on -one, uh, consultation with me, a paid one-on-one -on -one consultation to pick my brain, you can also do that in the bio. The link's gonna be in the description. So guys, thank you very much, and I'll see you guys on the other side of success.